next Santa Cruz, Bronson. Yeah, man. Uh, you know, I don't think I've ever been so wrong in my life. Santa Cruz came out last year with the announcement they were, you know, overhauling their Blur LT and they're gonna make it 650B, and I was just sure everyone is gonna be like hating on it. Why make it 650B? And I've never been so wrong. Anytime I go for a ride on a Santa Cruz in my neck of the woods, people are like, oh, is that that new Bronson thing? Like, everyone wants to ride this bike. It's a big deal. That said, does it live up to the hype? What do you guys think? Well, it was kind of a, our bike was kind of a, test bike was a slam dunk, really. It's like the spec. It's like XX1, XTR brakes, NB wheels. I mean, it's yeah. like, it's, it's kind best. of preaching to the converted. I mean, yeah. we're, well, okay, so it's a $9,830 bike. Yeah, it's the rich man's build, it's, for sure. I could buy three of my trucks. The truck I drive, I could buy three of those. Hell yeah. It's, yeah, for so those. crazy expensive. But, so you know, it better be But the parts don't make it a great bike, right? I mean, you can have, well, great, you can have great parts and it still be a piece of shit, right? That's true. Sure. And this bike was not. Well, I'm, I'm going to get in my opinion. What do you guys think of the actual performance of the bike? Though? It was awesome. I liked it. I thought it was good. I mean, it didn't blow me away, but it's a bike that I would... I mean, it's I, that's <laughs> for nine thousand eight hundred. No, actually, you <laughs> if wouldn't. I had the money, maybe yeah. I would, no. If you I, had a different job, I think that it's. I, I thought it was a really great performing bike, um, and I actually cleaned a lot of the stuff on on the trail of mountain loop that we had. Um, and there was one climb that I had never cleaned on any other bike before, and I kind of attribute that to, like the the traction with the VPP VPP leakage was really good, and then those Maxxis tires, the high roller twos. They're great out here. Yeah. It's a good tire. They were. It has tons of traction and it was loose and And it was good on, it was good on the slick rock as well. And yeah. It was good on the slick rock, yeah. And lots of like on the off cambery slick rock stuff and like lots of really good traction on that. Too. Yeah, those knobs actually penetrated in all the dust and it was pretty pretty awesome. I thought the bike had one of the best stances next to I, I felt as almost as comfortable on this as I did on the, the Kona process. I felt mm -hmm. really centered. I thought I had a really balanced cockpit. Um, I think the other thing I really noticed is just again how stiff I'm just incredibly stout those Santa Cruz carbon frames feel yeah you know, again you don't have you have two short dual links you have two solid triangles going on there and then you've got just this you know brick shit house kind of carbon fiber construction that I mean it's impressive the bike really holds the line well you know I guess it's easy people are gonna watch this and think like well nine thousand dollars the bike should rock but it's worth noting you get the frame for 2900 bucks and which is still a lot of coin, but then you get the whole thing built up at a base level for $4,300. So you can get- What does that $4,300 bike come with? It, it comes with a Fox 34 mm -hmm. up front, uh, a CTD rear shock, and I have to admit that I'm totally spacing on the rest of the component spec. But I think it's a Dior setup or something. Yeah, I think so too, and it's, it might even <laughs> Which be is like, fine, Dior is good. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's solid. I mean, but the, the core things, if you're getting a good fork, a good shock, and a great frame, a 4300 and everything else is rolling and clicking along, you're in pretty good shape. So we have a ridiculously expensive bike here, almost as expensive as the V10 Carbon yeah. bike, right? And this is a trail all mountain bike, but you could get this at a lot less money. Yeah. I don't know about you guys, but I've kind of always had a little bit of a issue with the VPP linkage in that I feel like that kind of makes like an S-curve with the leverage ratio. The, um, and, and I feel like it wallows a little bit in the mid-stroke, like, it just kind of feels dead to me when I'm when I'm pedaling along, along and hitting kind of little G outs and stuff. Well, it doesn't feel super supportive in a certain zone of the suspension stroke, and uh, and I don't know if you guys feel that or not, or if it bothers you, but it, I I definitely noticed it. Well, that I mean, a lot of people I've heard that from other people for sure. I I, I don't think the bike from what I really <coughs> notice is that I don't think the traction is good is as good under pedaling particularly in the, in the rocky section of the trail that we have, as say something like with a, a horse link mm -hmm. bike. But the flip side, of course, is the bike is considerably more efficient on its own, even without it being put in the trail mode. Right, you never have to flip the switch on the shock mm -hmm. back and forth. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of cool. I run the bike wide, but I have to ride the, run the bike wide open, otherwise I don't, think the, I don't feel like the rear suspension feels that good, frankly. Right, I had it on trail for um, a little part of the loop, and I, did the I, same thing I didn't feel I just... like the traction was, was there at all. Yeah, no, I run it wide open, which is, you know, the reverse. And typically almost every other bike that we have here, I'm always gonna stick it in, in trail mode and then open it wide open on the descents. You know, and I guess you could argue that's a plus of the Santa Cruz system, right? That's what it's all about is that, you know, the idea is that, you know, tension on the chain is causing it, um, you know, the suspension to extend slightly and to essentially combat squat, right? It's gonna reduce the monkey motion. Yeah. And so it kind of works, but it's a trade-off. Yeah. I don't think the attraction is as good as with some of the other suspension designs. Yeah, but we have a lot of other 
suspension platforms that are doing that without sort of the drawbacks. Like I feel like the giant. I feel as though yeah, the giant is really good. The Ibis Ripley, you know, DW uh, Link which bike. is a DW Link bike, is yeah. it's that bike. I don't feel any pedaling feedback. I don't feel any wallowing. It's just, it just it's supple even when you're pedaling and like really powering on the pedals. Would whereas with this bike, it, it seems like the harder you get on the power, there there is a, a like a reduced suppleness in the in the traction. Yeah, I felt it out here. I really feel it back home where I have a lot of roots and I'm riding and I'm really powering up a rooty climb. Mm -hmm. Then it really comes to the fore. Here it was just sort of like, oh, this isn't as fun. Like you get on the, okay. the specialized bikes and it's just you're powering yeah. through stuff on them and it feels like you're on a magic carpet. Yeah, it's just like right? blah, 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 through and everything. You don't have that here. But there, there are some things I really dig about the Santa Cruz that are going to sound kind of lame and bike nerdy, but threaded bottom bracket. Oh my God, yes. <sighs> Yeah, how dumb does that sound? But, it, but I mean, it sounds like a total geeky thing to say, but it's a bottom bracket system that doesn't creak constantly, that's easy to work on. And you know, they, they could take the route that everyone else is doing and put a press fit bottom bracket on here, right? Yeah, that's a props path to of them. So, so many props to them for sticking to their guns on this because Big time. people, I've seen even like steel manufacturers going with press fit because yeah. they think they can't sell a bike that doesn't have a press fit bottom bracket in it because everybody thinks that it's this big advantage, but it's a fucking piece of shit. <laughs> and no. threaded bottom brackets are, they work. I've been a mechanic my entire life for, for almost half my life now. And all the press fit stuff sucks. Threaded stuff is far superior and, it, and props for them to stick, for sticking to it. No, it's a huge thing because you know, they're gonna lose some sales. Some people are gonna be like, oh, you're not technologically advanced because you don't have press fit. Yeah, you're behind the curve, but which no, is, it's which they're is, ahead of the curve. Exactly, because they're sticking <laughs> to the guns and doing the right thing. And I, yeah. I love that about it. And I love, you know, there's a period there, you know, before Joe Granny came on as an engineer where their pivot hardware kind of sucked, frankly, mm -hmm. you know, and I think they still suffer a bad rap, but they've got some of the best pivot hardware. The bike is beautiful, it's stout. There are a lot of things I do like about the bike. I just, I'd have to say, as much as I liked it, I don't think the suspension performance is, is as good as some of the other bikes in the test, but. Agreed. But it is a hell of a bike. Yeah, and it's definitely top five. Yeah. It's top five for me as well. For sure, and that's not because of the price and these super expensive Envy wheels. I mean, again, it's all it's the, yeah. that. That stuff that's helped, gotta, right? That kit was dope. Your experience on the bike was definitely influenced by that. For sure, but the heart and soul of that bike, the frame, that's what gets me. Yeah, yeah. Santa Cruz is doing a lot of things right, and they've done a lot of things right with Bronson, for sure. For sure.